hello and welcome back to THM and today I've got a right belter of a video on your hands. Now I'm going to be looking at five recent failed projects of British touring cars so a lot of speculation um, of cars that would be built and entered and ultimately didn't and see what I think and how they would have got on. Let's crack into it. First up we have a Fiat Punto Grande um, which was supposed to be end well talking of being entered um, by IF Motorsport for the 2011 season. Um, but Alan Gower apparently said no one had ever contacted him about it. But if you can see the story that's on screen at the moment at the bottom there, there is definitely talks of it being done. And we've got Alan Gower's uh, kind of response to that next up on slide. The car would have looked cool. Um, and going back to 2011, when you've got things like the Focuses, Civics and other hatchbacks doing well, if it had factory support, it would have done really well. Um, a little bit of a shame that it didn't come to fruition. Um, it made a cracking rally car though, as you can see above. Not really too much to say on this one. This one only places in fifth. Next up in fourth place, we have the Renault Megane. Again, Renault was a cracking team back in the late 90s with their Super Touring Lagunas and whatnot, getting factory support from Renault as well as Williams F1 team. Now, back in 2013, there was talks of a company... Um, making some customer cars so effectively building the ngtc megans and then selling them on to race teams effectively what dynamics do and wsr do passing the bmws and hondas to different teams respectively it would look really cool it probably would have been a cracking car if it had again manufacturer backing but it didn't i think the cars were built um, and there was a showcase one at rockingham in the paddock that season but no one bought the cars and it kind of fell flat on its face. Now, the Megane's obviously gone on to be a very accomplished TCR car. So would a previous model with the right team and right backing have done well? I probably think so. Next up, we have this beauty of a car. The Skoda Octavia VRS. It was supposed to be run by TH Motorsport, who have ran all sorts of cars over the years. Um, I'll quickly put a quick uh, Wikipedia page up in a second of what they've ran, so you can kind of familiarise yourself with what they are. But they was going to build a Skoda Octavia for the season. It looks awesome. It had the full support of Skoda from what I understand. But unfortunately, with everything that was going on with Volkswagen Group at the time, they kind of pulled all form of financial backing to it and the project fell flat on its face. This car would have been wicked fast. I mean, it's got every underpinning you want. It's, it's a, a VW Group car, so it's going to be good. It had the right slippy shape that was really coming into fashion at the time. Think of the old Integras and things like that, which were just super fast in the Vectras. It would have been so good if Volkswagen didn't pull their back in. And it wasn't even the case of Skoda not wanting to. They were bang up for it. It was just the uh, the parents, Volkswagen, which said, well, well, boys, we're not doing this. So that fell flat on its face. But that would have been an awesome car. Next up in second place and just being pipped to the post by our eventual number one, is our friends Accelerate Motorsport, who of course run the Hyundai's at the moment. Now, towards the end of the season where they needed to get rid of the MGs, there was serious, serious talk about using the Mini Clubman, which is like the uh, the estate version of the Mini, which I know for all you uh, you older viewers is just madness thinking of Mini being big enough to race in the touring cars again. Anyway, the longer the short is, it was just 15 millimetres too short, so just 1.5 centimetres too short which is a shame. Now, um, Accelerate obviously owned and run by uh, Justina Williams, who also co-owns the Mini Challenge. There's a great working relationship there, and it would have been great to see another mark in a championship, but for the sake of 15 millimetres, it wasn't allowed. Now, um, there's no photographs of it, of course, because it was fairly quickly recognised that it couldn't be used. Um, so I've got a picture of Mr Bean on a Mini. Um, that's the closest I can find from our friends over at 5JH Designs. Make sure you go and have a look at their stuff. Some of the, the pictures that they make is incredible. And in number one, now this is absolutely ridiculous. And when I researched this video, I had to check a few times just to make sure someone wasn't having me on. But it's Thorny Motorsport. He used to run the insignias uh, above, which you can see in the Touring Car Championship. And they was going to run a Range Rover Evoque in the Championship. Um, I've got just up here, um, you can see a quick press release on everything. It was definitely going to be done. There's even picture mock-ups of it, as you can see. It just looks crazy. You know, if you thought the Lavorg or the Civic Tora looked a bit stupid, look at this. This is unbelievable. But the long and the short is, it was going to be made. A couple of sponsors pulled out, and they had a conversation with Jaguar Land Rover, who of course own Range Rover. They didn't want to bring away from the, the feminine marketing of the uh, Evoque, which is who it's aimed for. And they were not a fan, so subsequently the plug got pulled. 
but imagine what that would have looked like. So that's the end of the video. Let me know in the comments below what you thought of these absolutely nuts cars, especially that Evoke. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe so you can keep seeing videos like this. And let me know what other cars do you know of that was going to race in the touring cars that pulled out. Perhaps I can make a part two. Let me know below.